Jane with Rope and Resellers, and here's my weekly update of what sold on eBay and merch for April 14th through the 20th, 2018. First up was a Hogwarts Harry Potter themed backpack. Uh, it was uh, not exactly a kid sized backpack. It was, I would say, it was more like a small backpack. But anyway, it sold for $14.99. I collected $19.37. Cost me a dollar at Goodwill, $7.29 in eBay and PayPal fees, as well as what I paid in shipping it's for a total profit of $11.08, and it took two days to sell. So that was the right price. Here's another thing at the right price, some tapa, which I have talked about before, the Polynesian handmade cloth. These were sold as little touristy gig things. Um, this is state sale I went to. She had gone to Fiji and New Zealand. So uh, I assume these were from Fiji. They were round, which is a little bit harder to sell. So I priced them a little bit lower than I would have for a rectangular one. I saw them on a professional site for about $45. So I just priced this one at $34. $32.54 is what it sold for. I had my store in 7% off last week. And so uh, this got included with that because it was automatic. Thirty-six oh four is what I collected. I spent eight dollars for this at an estate sale, and I know it's an easy sell. It's a fast nickel instead of a slow dime, so that's okay. I'm okay with that. Seven fifty-seven in shipping and fees for total profit of twenty dollars forty-seven cents, and it took me three hours. So you consider my time. And how long it took to sell, that's pretty good. More than doubled my money. Same thing with this. $32.54, $36.04 is what I collected. I spent $8.770 on shipping and fees for a total profit of $20.34. And that took three hours as well. So that those to two different people, I know. And then the next morning I wake up to this sale. And it's a, the last one, thirty-two fifty-four, thirty-six oh four. I collected. I spent eight dollars seven seventy-seven dollars forty-four cents for shipping and fees for a total profit of twenty sixty, and it took a day to sell. So the shipping is a little different on these, and that's why the the fees are a little different, uh, just because of the cardboard and the way they were folded. I had to do something different for the fold lines on this one. So anyway. Uh, and that took a day. Pretty easy money. This was the big, the, my big one of the week. It's not huge, but um, this is a Cambridge Audio preamp for a phono, I believe. Yeah, there it is. It says right there. And uh, I bought this at the same estate sale. I got the tapa cloth. I spent $3 on it, uh, not really knowing exactly what it was. And I also didn't carefully check the box to see that it didn't have the power cord, which made it worth so much less. Well, I probably could have gotten a hundred bucks for it if, if it if it were if it did have the power cord, but it didn't, so I sold it for sixty nine seventy four, part of that seven percent off. Eighty three ninety two is what I collected. I spent three dollars for this at the estate sale, twenty one sixty four in shipping and fees for a total profit of fifty nine dollars twenty eight cents and it took two days to sell. The guy's pretty worried about all of it, so we'll see if he gets it up and running. Okay, this was um, uh, an impulse buy, sort of. I should know better, and I'm going to talk about this subject uh, a little bit about things that are breakable. So while I was in, while this was waiting to be sold, I accidentally uh, had it behind my chair in my office, and it chipped. It was perfect before that. And it didn't sell, and it didn't sell, and then I ran over it with a frickin' chair, and luckily I found the piece, so I glued it back on, but it wasn't as perfect as it was when I bought it. I only, yeah, so anyway, but it sold 39, a lot of watchers on that one. $39.99, these old TV lamps do pretty well for me, but they're breakable, and they're hard to ship. $58.46 for, is what I collected. Spent $4 for this at the, at the, the thrift store, twenty-five, twenty-seven in shipping and fees for a total profit of twenty-nine, nineteen, and it took a month to sell. So yeah, within a month I had already broken it. I should know better. I don't know why I had it on the floor. 
puka shells. These are these little shells from Hawaii that used to be really popular when I was a kid. And uh, this is out of, believe it or not, from a year ago, Margaret's jewelry jar still. And it sold for $9.99 with free shipping. So it didn't cost me anything. $4.31 in shipping and fees for a total profit of $5.68 profit. And it took two months to sell. So I still have some of that jewelry that I'm listing. Adobe Creative Suite uh, Premiere 2. I really wanted this to work on my computer, but I couldn't get it to work. It's just a little too old. I think 4 is the latest version I can work on my computer. She offered me $20, so I took it because I'm into getting rid of stuff right now. $23.82 is what I collected. I spent a dollar on this at the thrift store. $5.95 in shipping and fees for a total profit of $16.87, and it took two months to sell. Here's a Dodge Ram hat, pretty generic. Did have some sweat marks, which I disclosed on the front. You can see them here, um, or I don't know what it was, bleach, who knows. Uh, I did wash it, so that's after I washed it. Anyway, sold for four. $19.99 with free shipping. I spent $0.25 cents for this at a garage sale. $4.99 in shipping and fees for a total profit of $9.75 and it took a year to sell. The last thing I sold were these little mugs. Uh, I had them in my booth at one point. I just think these things are so kitchen cool but obviously not everybody else feels that way because they took quite a while to sell. And they sold for relatively cheap. I'm such a sucker for mid-century stuff. Anyway, these were really fun. They had a little sports theme on them. $9 is what they sold for. $19.25 is what I collected. Spent a dollar a glass at a rummage sale. No, garage sale. Eleven sixty dollars for shipping and fees. For a total profit of $3.65, they were paying to ship, and hopefully they get there in one piece, and it took three years to sell. Looking at the numbers, $277.31 is what everything sold for, $337.92 is what I collected, $37.25 is cost of goods, mostly because of these. 10376 in shipping and fees for a total profit of 196.91 on Amazon merch I sold eight shirts 3627 no Macari or posh so my total e-commerce to my my so my e-commerce total was 233.18 I want to apologize uh, for my nasally voice I unfortunately got a cold in Japan on the last day and it turned into a sinus infection so I sound like a completely congested and uh, I'm, I'm working on getting better. I also had something horrible last week, it's some sort of flu or something. I was completely incapacitated and isn't it great that I work on eBay so that I can lay on the couch and try to recover and not have to worry about calling in sick or anything because I'm my own boss. It sort of stressed me out a little bit that I wasn't working, but then I thought, you know what, I I can make up for it on Saturday and Sunday and just work a little bit and and things are going to be fine. So, and as you saw, it was a pretty average week uh, for summertime and I, you know, I'm not going to complain. Wish, I always wish it was better, but it's not too bad. So someone in the comments last week asked me about Macari. I'm doing a little experiment over there. Macari, Posh. I have well, I only have five things on Posh. And Posh, I don't really, I don't know that I'm the right age demographic for that. I mean, I know, I realize you don't have to be any age to sell on that, but there's a lot of sharing and a lot of going to parties and selling stuff. And I don't buy, I'm not going to buy anything on Posh. So I don't really understand how that all works. And what I saw was, uh, and how I decided which things to throw on where I'm trying to get rid of stuff from the consignment store. That's good. But you know, I just, I really think that the eBay clothing market is flooded. So anyway, I put stuff that was more high end 
or more fast, fast fashion on posh. So um, I'm trying to think of labels like Michael Stars. I get a lot of that through, but you know, I, and uh, things like that. Well, and, and if I thought they may have come like Maeve or may have come from anthropology or Stitch Fix or one of those type of places, then I put it up on Posh and I put it relatively cheap. I put it, I tried to do things $10 and less. Just the problem is, is it's the fees are pretty high. So you, it's not a huge incentive to go low. You can get a little bit more money on Posh. So maybe I put things at like $15, $20. But uh, I felt like Macari is more the place where you just get rid of it. And mostly what I have on Macari, I have like 10 things on Macari, I think. And it's a lot of the lots. Uh, I made lots of like shorts or jeans or shirts or whatever. And not in any particular size. I did it mainly to do reselling type of lots. And uh, listed it at about 2 bucks a piece. Uh, I pay a dollar for them pretty much. So I figured you know, double my money and get it out of here. Well, those aren't selling either. So I'm not sure there's that kind of traffic on Macari. I don't know. I, I, I honestly can't figure it out. I can't figure out how to get rid of these clothes. I'm, I'm almost giving up on it, on the clothing thing. And then anything vintage, like the old North Face jackets, Patagonia, that stuff goes all on eBay. So that's kind of how I'm divvying up the clothes side of things. I'm inundated with clothes. She's going through the store right now and pulling all of the stuff that hasn't sold for her. And if it's, if it's got a hole or a stain or it's pilled, then it's just going straight to a donation. But if it has any kind of chance, I'm thinking I'm just going to throw it up on one of those three sites. I might do let go. I'm not really sure. It's such a small area that I'd feel really bad if someone was like, hey, I took that to the consignment store and donated it, and now it's being sold on offer up or whatever, but or let go. So I, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind. But anyway, so that's my Macari experience. Not super great. I've sold only two lots out of that, and it's, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of sharing and a lot of, liking and I don't have time for that. The other thing I want to talk about this week is um, some of the stuff. So this was kind of opening week for us here in in my area of Montana. And what I mean by that was there's two community sales and a rummage sale and a bunch of garage sales. So this is kind of the first weekend where everybody's like, okay, let's start purging. And I have to say, I thought it was a dud. It was actually really good in hindsight because uh, I bought something that I thought I was going to keep, and then I saw how much it was worth. And so I paid up. I paid $62. It was a scanner, and it turns out it's worth like $230. So um, I think I'm just going to let that go and get a flatbed scanner. It was just a portable scanner that you put feed things through. I have a ton of postcards I need to get scanned, and I didn't really want to do flatbed because that's a lot of work. I think it's a lot faster to just feed them through the scanner. But... Uh, considering that I can buy a bunch of ink and get a nice printer with the profits for the scanner. I wasn't, you know, and I always feel bad because it's a church room and sale and I'm thinking, oh gosh, <laughs> something bad's going to happen to me. But uh, honestly, I really did think that we were going to keep it. But when I looked and saw how much it was really worth and it was the end of the sale and it was like Saturday afternoon and it was almost time to go. And the guy's like, okay, fine. Just, you know, you can have it for 65. He was originally asking like 150 or $175 for it. And then slowly, but surely knocked it down. And when I walked in, it was 95. No. Yeah. 95. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to pay that much. It was a nice scanner. People really liked it. It seemed like it worked with the Mac, but I just, anyway, so I ended up buying it. And then I ended up seeing how much it was worth and I'm not going to feel guilty about it. I'm just going to sell it and I'm going to buy the thing that my family needs. We really need a new copy, a new copier because I spilled my coffee on the one that we have now. And so it just ends up with green stripes on it. Whenever I try to, kids are trying to do color copies, they're like, mom, what's wrong with our, with our pictures? <laughs> so that had to do with the fact that I had my coffee resting above it when I was doing shipping and knocked it over with my tape 
a dispenser and spilled coffee and it leaked all over the copier and it hasn't worked. It worked for a little while and now it doesn't work. So it needs to, it needs to move on and we need to get another one. Uh, so, but also in those rummage sales are some phenomenal deals on breakables. And you saw I sold two breakable things and I was not very happy and cussed them both out when I was packaging them because I always worry about things breaking and they take a ton of bubble wrap because you have to pack enough bubble wrap so you can't feel it under underneath the bubble wrap, you know, and you have to trust that your fragile sticker on the outside, they're going to take a little bit of pity on you, but you always know that there's that chance that it's going to break. And I just, I am done with the stress. I'm done with the packing. So I think as of today, I am declaring well, actually, this weekend, I just decided I am not doing breakables. Maybe mugs. Those are fairly easy to pack and fairly durable. But for the most part, I am just saying no to breakables. I know there's good money in it, but there's a lot of other stuff out there. So that is my declaration. I am, I am done with breakables, and I'm almost done with clothing. So that's where I'm at with my business because I feel like there's a lot of other stuff. Where do I live? I live in a place where there are a lot of outdoor enthusiasts. There's tons of camping gear. There's tons of vintage Patagonia North Face. There's Arcteric jackets. There's really great backpacks. So I think that's kind of more the direction I really want to go in for a little while, at least for this time of year and the summer months, and then we'll reevaluate in the fall. So with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. You can get on the little dinger thing, that little bell, dinger thing. <laughs> you can get on the little bell on the side, and it'll YouTube will give you a notification when I post a video. I generally post a video on Mondays for what I sold on eBay and Amazon Merch. And occasionally I will do hauls if requested. Uh, I almost took video this weekend because I went with my son and he did phenomenal. Oh, I get so mad when he goes with me because he just, he does so much better than me. He's like, oh, I really like this joystick. The guy sold it to him for a buck. It's worth a hundred dollars. I'm like, really? That just never happens to me. I would never think to buy a joystick and then think that it was worth a lot of money. Uh, it was some sort of Microsoft one that rumbles when you, I, I played with it. It is really cool, but I, I would have never seen it. And then there were times we'd walk up to a garage sale and he's like, oh, look at that. Oh, look at this. And I'm, I didn't see it at all. So it's good to have a partner in crime and they'll see things that you don't see and, and work together. But it was really fun to be with him. But I thought, oh, well, here's my videographer. I could have just had him take some video of me going in garage sales. But I was so focused because it was such a big weekend that I didn't really want to clog it up with trying to take a bunch of video too. So. I just didn't. But anyway, so thanks for watching. Hope you guys had good sales this week and hope your sales are even better next week.